when they visiting her father, the son has to come with her. Okay, today is my dad's time, you must come with me. But when her father-in-law, she's sick or she has any other excuse. Father-in-law realized that. He realized that his daughter-in-law does not like him. And father-in-law got sick. And the son decided, he said, listen, my dad is not like he used to. He's too old now and he got sick. He has to move and he will live with us in that room. She said, uh, he said, listen, either my, my father, I'm not going to leave him alone. He has to move. When she saw that he is serious about it, she said, okay. He went to his father and he said, my dad, I want you to move with us. But the father-in-law know something that his sister, his daughter-in-law does not like him. But the son said, no, my father, you have to visit, you have to come, you have to move. Anyways, the father, at the end, he moved to his son's house and they gave him a room. She came to him and said, okay, tell me the food that you like and the foods that you do not like. So she had two lists, food that he likes and food that he doesn't. What she did is she took the food that he likes and she threw it away and she had the list, the food that he does not like. And she started doing every day the food that he does not like. The son, every morning he goes to his work. When he comes back later, he, go, he will go to his father. How is everything about me? We'll say, okay, okay. Because he does not want to tell uh, his son what his wife is doing to him. Anyways, after month or less, the father got sick and he started taking medicine. One week, um, after two months basically, she called her husband, she said, you have two options, there is no third option, either me or your father. We cannot stay, both of us, in this room. Either I will leave this house or take your father away from me. The son said, okay, where? Well, that's my father. She said, take him to the nursing home. She said, no, I can't do that. She said, then I will leave. Anyways, uh, he got weak and he came to his father and said, oh father, I want to share with you something. I want to take you to the nursing home. What do you think? The father immediately said, that's good. I also need some medicines, so yeah, take me there. He took his father to nursing home. Okay. Week later, around midnight, call came from the nursing home. They called the son. They said, okay, uh, we're sorry. Your father passed away. The guy, he cried. He said, that's my father. I wish. I kept him here at least another week and he ran to the nursing home. He asked uh, the, one of the nurses over there and she said, are you his son? And he said, yes. He said, I feel sorry. Your father every day used to cry. And I asked him, why are you crying? And he said, that's the only son I have, and I give him my life. And he throw me here like a dog. And he asked him a paper and pen. He took a paper and pen, and he wrote a letter for his son, and he gave it to the nurse, and he said, when my son comes, give it to him. When he 
he came and she said, and this letter for you. The guy opened the letter and started reading. He's a little bit emotional. First letter said, oh my son, I love you and I still love you. You are my only son. And he started telling something. He said, do you remember I know I will die one day, but I was expecting when I'm dying, I die between your chest, or at least you with me. But I'm sorry, you throw me here, you throw me here, nursing home, which I will never do. You throw me here like a dog. The son started crying and crying. He took the paper. He paid his father. He came to his house and his life was totally different. And his wife saw him. He was wrong with you. He does. He couldn't speak. And finally she said, you know what? You are sick. And I don't want to stay with you. Divorce me right now. So he divorced his wife. He lost his father. Okay. He lost his wife and he lost his life. He disobeyed his father. His father, look to this father right now. May Allah bless him. She's sitting right now on his foot. MashaAllah, may Allah bless him. So the fathers or the mothers love their kids. They're willing to give their lives. But when we grow up, when you grow up, are you going to pay back to your parents the same way that they used to be with you? Or are you going to say, oh, you know what, mom? I have no time for you. Dad, I have no time for you. Are you going to say that or what's going to be your life? I told this story uh, to my kids. My daughter, who's seven years old, asked me, Oh, father, why always the boys are bad? I said, who's bad, the boy or the girls? He said, no, the boy. Because he could have said no, because that's his father. And I say, yeah, okay, maybe we'll see. Okay, now, I want to ask you questions. Um, what do you think about this story? Whatever things, uh, if the boy, the mistake from the boy, raise your hand. Who do you think was the boy or, or the wife? Which one made more mistake? What do you think? The boy? Okay. Um, he just got here. Okay, I wanted to participate. What do you think? Oh, yeah. Yes. Um, so I think the wife. Okay. The, wife. Yeah. the wife. The wife. The wife. The wife. The wife. The wife. The boy. The boy. What do you think? Boy. Huh? You just came. Okay, give it a hand. Can you please participate? What do you think? If you think uh, the boy, raise your hand. Okay. If you think the girl, please raise your hand. Okay. Um, all boys are not bad and all women are not bad. But in case, if something this would happen to you, what would you do? What would you do? Are you gonna pay your wife and say, okay, I'm gonna keep my father? Or you will keep your father home or parent? What would you do? Hmm? Keep the parent. I wanna tell you one thing. Just put this one in your ear. And remember always. You have only one parent. 
whether you're a boy or girl, you have only one parent. You cannot find another mom or you cannot find another father. Simple, you have one mom and one dad. There is million women or there is million men in this world. You can find, if your wife not good, you can find another one or another one, you another one. And same thing, if your husband is not good and you can find another dozen of husbands, which is better than, inshallah, the first one. So, this story, um, I will tell you one story different than that. Okay, same thing, but we will see who is good this time, the boy or the girl. Okay. What happened, uh, also, they were good men, and mashallah, he was number one in high school. He got scholarship from one of the best universities in the world. He graduated, he came back to his country. Then, after five years, he got married, alhamdulillah, and he has one son. After five years, they called him uh, to come to the, that country just to get uh, to have training. He told his wife and said, okay, you know what, I'll be out of the country for one week. She said, okay, no problem. No problem. He left. As soon as he left, he went to the airport, he called his wife and said, okay, you know what, Alhamdulillah, I'm leaving right now. She said, MashaAllah, call me when you arrive, your destination. He went to the other country. The country was, uh, he came to New York. He was not from New York, okay. He arrived in New York, he called his wife. But she didn't pick up. He called her again. And again, and again. She didn't pick up. He said, what happened to my wife? She was, okay. He came to his house, and he started calling her. She didn't pick up. Next day, he called his brother and he said, Hey, can you please see my wife? Is she okay? Because I'm calling her uh, since yesterday and she's not picking up. He said, Okay. He went to his uh, sister in law's house. He knocked the door. Salam alaikum alaikum. Is everything okay? Yes. Oh, your husband uh, wants you to call him. He called her. I think she didn't pick up. She said, Yeah, yeah, I saw his missed call and I will call him back. Then she didn't call back. The, the, the guy called his brother and said, yes, I went to your house. Your wife is okay. And she said she would call you. She didn't call. And he called her again and again and she didn't pick up. He called his mother-in-law. And she said, my mother, uh, can you please check my wife? Is she okay? Because I keep calling for two days and she's not picking up the phone. She said, okay, I think I just talked to her a few, few, few hours ago, but I will go home. She went to Ortala and she said, your husband is calling you. Can you please call him back? She said, yes, I saw his missed call and I will call him back. And again, she didn't pick up the phone and she didn't call back. The guy is supposed to be there seven days, but after three days, he couldn't stay. He started calling and calling and calling and calling, and she said, I'll pick up the phone. Okay, after three days, he texted her and said, she said, I'm calling you for a few days and texting you, and I see you reading my text message, and you're not responding. Are you okay? She didn't respond. Then he said, okay, you know what? I'm coming tomorrow. For one text. I'm coming I'm tomorrow. She didn't reply. The guy came to, came back to his country. Immediately, he took taxi, his house, and he started knocking the door. His wife opened the door with a smile face. The guy said, hey, are you okay? Are you, what's going on? Why didn't you pick up the phone? Why didn't you pick up the phone? Are you okay? The guy, guy. He got mad. First he thought his wife sick or something, but she dressed up and she's smiling. He started yelling. Immediately he's saying, come, 
his son came and he said, hey daddy, how are you? He said, okay, wait, wait. Just, yes, what's wrong with you? He said, what happened? He said, I'm calling, I, keep, I called you more than 100 times. Okay, who else did you call? I called my brother. Okay, who else did you call? I called your mother too. And she said, that's it. He said, what do you mean? He said, I will ask you one question. Did you call your mother? And the guy said, yes, no, I don't know. Oh. And he said, no, I didn't call her. You didn't call her, yeah. She has the key, his car is key. And she took the key and she said, oh, my dear husband, I try to inform you and teach you that there is someone in this world loves you more than anyone. You went there. You couldn't stay for one week because of me and your son. And you were calling me and calling me and calling me. And you did not call one time your mother. How many times I inform you, be good to your mom, be good to your mom. But you didn't listen to me. I thought this would be best lesson for you to know who is your mother. She get the key and said, your Jannah is waiting for you. The guy, he said, Wallahi, I, I said, okay, am I, is this my wife or someone else? He said, she taught me, listen, I will never forget in my life. He took the car and he realized, yeah, when is the last day I talked to my mom? When is the last day I called my, my, my mama? He realized it was a long time ago. He took his car and he ran away to his mom and he started kissing her face, kissing her hands. He said, Mom, I'm sorry, mother, I'm sorry. And she said, what happened? He said, no, mama, I'm, forgive me, believe me, I will change. I will be the best. Since that day, he started visiting her, his mom every morning. Every morning. So, there is women like that. So for the man, look for the woman that will support you to be good son to your parent. But for if she is other than that, she wants to disconnect you from your parents, do not listen. Do not listen. Because as I said, you have only one parent. Always remember that. Your mom only one. You don't have any other mom in this world. And you have only one father. So you don't have any other father. You don't have any father. I will conclude with one story. And this story, uh, most of our kids, okay, maybe they think that they are better than their parents. Why? Because the parent, mother or father, mm, they're not from here, they just came from Africa. They don't know how to speak English. Uh, when they, even if they speak in English, they have accent like me, okay? Or just, they think that they are better than their parents. They were also a uh, happy family, mother and father and young daughter. In this world, you know, everything is not going to be like what you wish. The father died, and the daughter is only two years old. Okay. The mother then, she got mad, and she got sick because she loved her husband more than, any, more than herself, I can say. And she decided, to take care of her daughter. Many men came to her, just once married her, she refused. She said, no, I want to, I have only one daughter, and I want to take care of my daughter. She didn't go to school. She went to her house. She just to collect a lot of money to send her daughter the best school in the city, the best school in the city. Then, what happened?
Okay. Then she sent her the best school, Islamic school, and one of the best school. She, okay, what she used to do also, she used to take her daughter to the school and bring her from the school. Even she was not going to the bus school. She used to take her, her daughter from, to, from the school to the house. So she used to take her to the school, and at the end of the school, she used to take her to the house. Okay, she grew up. She finished middle school. You know the kids, most of the kids good until middle school. When they come to high school, they'll say, hmm, okay, mom, what's wrong? No. Hey, what's wrong with you? No. He used to say everything okay, but right now he's high, in high school. He or she thinks that right now she is better than that. She's a good person. She's grown. I, already, I know what I'm doing. No, you don't know what you're doing. Your mother or your father, They've given you their experience. Don't say, I know what I'm doing. No, you don't. Maybe you think what you're doing is good, but you don't have the experience. If they tell you this is not good, always remember that's not good. Because they love you. They want to give you their experience. Maybe they have done it this long time ago. And they saw the result is not good. So they tell you this is good and this is not good. Okay. So when she went to high school, she said, Okay, mom, listen, I don't want you to go with me from now on. This is a new school and I'm old, I'm old enough. I know what's right, what's, bad, what's wrong. I will go to the school by myself and I will come back. So please don't go with me. I don't want you to go with me. The mother said, okay. If you want it, I have no problem. Okay. She used to go to school by herself with a bus and come back. She got some friends. Okay. They asked her, they asked her to visit their houses. She started visiting them. She visited one house and she saw a big house, beautiful house. And the, that lady's mother, she dressed up. She's professional. She knows how to speak. She knows how to dress up. Immediately she started comparing her mom with her, her friend's mother. Her mom doesn't know how to dress up, doesn't know how to write or read. Uh, she, maybe she, uh, she doesn't go out. While this one, her friend's mother, she is professional, she goes outside and work. Okay, she has a lot of money, she has a car. She came back and she was small. She knocked the door and she saw her mom. She was, mother said, are you okay, my daughter? She said, yes, I'm okay, leave him alone. Are you okay? Yes. Is anything okay? Everything, anything wrong? No, everything is okay. Okay. You want to eat? No, I don't want to eat. Okay. Go, go upstairs and take your rest. She came to her room. Her room is clean. Okay, she want to change her clothes. She opened the, uh, where the clothes. She saw her clothes, mashallah, uh, nice and beautiful. Her mom bought for her also some perfume that she likes. She started thinking, okay, who is wrong, me or my mom? She started debating herself. I don't want my mom to come to the school. The next day, you know, she went to the school. Then, was at the last day of the school, she graduated and she became number one in the school. They gave her a paper. paper uh, they said, okay, give this one to your mother uh, because your graduation is two days or three days from now. Okay, and also invite your mom. This is an invitation for your parents. She took the paper and she said, okay, if 
my mother go to when go to school. She will put me down. She doesn't know how to speak. She doesn't know how to dress up. What should I do? I'm not gonna tell my mother. I will go to school by myself, and I will uh, go to the state by myself. Because my mom, she's hebatir, another word. Okay. She has a paper, and she brought it. Do you know what's hebatir? Okay. Good, mashallah. <laughs> You tell him, yeah. <laughs> okay. She, uh, like, like it. Okay. What happened? She brought, uh, she brought a paper. Now she came to the house and she said, she brought the, and she put it on the table like that. The mother said, oh, what is this paper? I think it's important for you. She said, no, it's not important. You can put it aside. <laughs> mother is keen. She doesn't know how to read. She said, but it's from your school, right? She said, yes, yeah, from my school. She took the paper. She kissed the paper because that's for the huh? And she said, even if it's not important, you are my daughter. Any paper from me for you is important for me. She took it and put it somewhere. Okay, and mother starts sitting next to her. And she wants to move from, away from her mother. What's wrong with you these days? You're not, you're not okay. Are you hiding something from me? Is there anyone bothering you? She wants to say, you the one who's bothering me. But she's still controlling herself. She said, you know what, mom? I want to go upstairs. She went upstairs. She sat on her bed. And she started bathing. Okay, between her and herself. Okay, should I take my mom to the school? She said, no, I will. Yes. Finally, she said, no, I'm not. At the end, she went make wudu. She went, she made wudu. She prayed two rak'ah. Then she started thinking and thinking. Her conclusion was, I will not tell my mother and she's not going to go with me to the school. And I do not want to show my friends who's my mother. Because she is not the one I want. You cannot create your mother. You cannot use your mother. Okay, we cannot use our kids or we cannot use our mother. You can use your job, yes. I don't like this job. You can find another one. But you cannot use your parent or you cannot use your kids. This is a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay. Then, next day she went to the school, two days before the end of the school, she saw her friend crying. She said, why are you crying? She said, I, you know that lady? The lady that her mom is professional, has a good car, she knows how to dress up, she knows how to talk, she is educated. And she said, what's wrong? Why are you crying? She said, I have a problem with my mother. Why? Your mama, your mother is mashallah, is professional and 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 she start counting. She said, uh, yes, last night what happened, my mom always does not give me time. I went to a hotel. I want you to take me to the shop place. I want to buy something. She said, she told me I don't have time for you. Your mother told you that she doesn't have time for you? Yes. Not only that, I, told, I asked my mother, I said, Mother, I want a I wanted time, sit with you. Give me at least two hours of your time. I want it. even sometimes I don't get the food that I like. And the mother concluded, listen, this is a lot. If you do not want it, leave the house. The other lady, she's 
listening. She said, while she's talking, uh, the other, her friend talking to her, she started crying. She started crying, okay? She said, she, I start again comparing my mother, that every time when I go to the knock the door, she opens the door for me. She gives me a hug. Everything that I need is available. Even if I don't need anything, she comes to my house. need anything. And this lady that she said, if you don't want it, leave the house. She left everything. She left even her bullet and she went to the house. She knocked the door and she hugged her mom and she started crying and crying. Mom, forgive me. I was that person. And I said, what's wrong? And she told her mother everything. And the mother said, you know, my daughter, you know, there is no, you know why I'm not educated? She said, no. Your father died when you were two years old. And many men came to me and I refused because of you. I didn't go to school because of you. I just wanted to work for you to make you the best. And not only that, every night, every night, I used to pray beyondly and I used to make the heart for you. Now you are 18 years old. Wallahi, since you are two years old, up to now, there is no one night, even if I don't pray, the time that I don't pray, I make the heart for you every night for 16 years. And she said, you are my daughter, whatever you do, I forgive you. She went to the hospital, to the, to the school, the last day of graduation, and they called the, uh, the lady, the girl, they said, you are number one, they gave her a certificate. When she get the certificate, the diploma, she took the microphone and she called my mother. My mother, Fulana, Fulana, please come to the stage. The mother came to the stage. Ms. Keen, she, yeah, the, some mother are so honest and then she, she said, to, she came to the stage and said, she, she said, okay, if I didn't have this person here, I wouldn't be this person. I wouldn't be number one. I would not be uh, the person that I am. My mom gave me everything. My mom gave me her life. Therefore, this certificate is not only for me, it's also for my mom. It's a gift for your mom. And they came back and happy and came back to the house. That was the end of the story. Now I want to ask you questions. When your mom asking you, okay, to read or paper for her, for example, maybe you are second generation here. You don't know how to speak, how to write Somali or how to read Somali. Your mother or your father don't know maybe uh, how to read or write English. If your mom asks you, Muhammad or Ali or Harima or Khadija, read this letter for me, some kids, he will change his face. He thinks that he's better than his mom because my mom, his mom doesn't know how to read this one. That's shame. If you have that attitude, change it, please. Change it. Because it's not good. Don't think, don't ever think that you are better, better than your parents. Don't ever think that. Always remember, if you are here, because of your parents. Allah created you, yes. But Allah did not create you from nowhere. Allah created you from this mother and this father. Therefore, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asking you to honor them. You know why we have to worship Allah? Because He is the one who created us, right? So the one who created us deserve to be worshipped. And do you know why we must honor the, our parents, even if they're not Muslim? We must honor and respect our parents. The reason being is because of them, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created you from them. So therefore we have to respect our mother and fathers. Don't ever, don't, don't give them attitude. Wallahi, if you be good 
to your parent, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you everything that you need. Okay, Sheikh Abdullah asked me to continue a little bit, okay? I will add you one more story. Okay? They were also a father and his son. One night, they had a conversation. While they're talking, someone knocked the door. Knocked. And even did not stop stand, knocking, knocking, knocking. And the father, they jumped, who's this? The father jumped and opened the door. All the guy came and he started yelling to the father, give me my money. Fear Allah, what is my money? I'm waiting for you a long time. I cannot wait more than that. Give me my money right now. And the father couldn't say anything. And the son is listening. What's wrong? Why are you yelling like that? Your dad owes me 30,000 riyal. And the father said, yes, I know I owe you, but I told you I will pay you. I don't have it right now. No, I'm not giving you. You must give me right now. Uh, while the father and the older guy are talking, the guy went to his room and he brought 20,000 riyal that he saved for himself because he wanted to get married for his new life. He took that 20,000, brought that 20,000, and he came to the older guy and said, how much my dad owes you? He said, 30,000. He said, this is 20,000, get it? And come to me every month, I will give you $2,000. I tell you, up $2,000 until you finish. The father said, no, don't give him. I will give him. The old guy took it. The father said, please, don't invest. This is my son's money. He worked for it. He wants to do his new life. That's his future. I will pay you. Please don't take his money. I said, the old guy said, no, that's my money. I didn't get it. And the old guy took the 20000 and left. The son came to his father and he said, and he kissed his forehead and said, my father, if I give you my life, I will not regret. This 20,000 is nothing. I will pay every money and don't worry about this 20,000. Father, uh, he got emotional and he cried. He said, oh, my son, I ask Allah to open all good gates for you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give you this from someone that you're not expecting. The son, next day, he went to his work. He was an uh, employee of one of the company. He was an engineer. SubhanAllah, before the end of his shift, his old friend from university came to him. He said, okay, hey, salam alaikum. Where are you? And, you know, two friends, when they don't talk a long time, they say, where are you? Why didn't you call me a long time? No call. What is wrong with you? He said, no, I, we got busy, Malaysia. He said, okay, um, let's go drink some tea. He said, okay, now we break, let's go. Okay, why did they drink the tea? He said, you know what? Uh, one of my manager opened a new company, and he was looking for someone that professional and I mean trusted. He can trust them because he want to make manager. And you the one who came to my mind. That's why I came to you today. He said, where is that? He said, let's eat lunch, then we will go to him. They ate lunch and they went to the guy. And he said, okay, how much you took a month? He said, 3,000 riyal. He said, okay, I want you to go to your work and give them your resignation. Uh, now I will give you 10,000 riyal just to get ready because buy something and just when you come next week you have to dress up because this is a big company this 10,000 is uh, down payment just I don't want you to pay me back but you will work for me for two years this 10,000 and not only that uh, you will have a car you will not own but you will use it while you're working for me and he gave him 15,000 for the next five months. No, for 15,000 for the next two months. 
He said, you will work for me 7,500. So true. double of what, more than 100% increase. The guy, the son, the, the guy, the engineer, when he saw all those things, he cried. And the manager said, what's wrong? Why? You don't like it? You don't like my offer? Why are you crying? He said, no. Well, I am not crying because of that. But subhanAllah, Allah accept my father's dua. Yani, what happened? He said, last night, and he told the story. And the guy said, SubhanAllah, you're a good son. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give you. How much you owe that guy? He said 10,000. He brought 10,000. He said, go ahead, give that all the guy this 10,000. The son come father to his, he came back to his house. And he was so happy. And he went to his father, you know, I'm, my father, I'm so happy. Why are you happy? He and he tell the story, he said, Oh my father, Alhamdulillah, Allah accept your dua for me. Except for that for me. Tayyip, I want to ask you questions about this story. What is the benefit of this story? What can we benefit from this story? I want to see who is going to pay attention and uh, what, what can we benefit from this story? Can you tell me one? Go ahead, mashallah, go ahead. Respect your parents, akallah khair. Huh? To listen to your parents, okay? I need to grow up, guys. Second line. Ah, uh, no, no, you too, exactly, akallah khair. These guys. Uh-huh. <laughs> You will gain their dua. Be willing to your parents and you will gain their dua. Good, mashallah. And vice versa. If you're not a good person, what's going to happen? You will get their in car or they will make dua upon you, not for you. Okay? What else? What else can we benefit? Okay. Go ahead. Loyalty. Loyalty too. Yeah, good, mashallah. Next. Yeah, you. Oh, you just came? Yeah. Okay. <coughs> what he said? No, don't copy. What do you think? <laughs> okay. Get down. Okay, these two guys. What do you think? Ali, you? Yeah. Okay, and the one who is wearing the hat, Canada, I think. Are you from Canada? Is it Canada or yeah? What do you think? Huh? Pray for parents? MashaAllah, good. And also always help your parents. You know, uh, they all, they, well, I know when you need something, you go to your mom, mom, I need, for the boys, what they ask was, I need this game, I need this game, and PlayStation, and, 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 so, so sometimes, I like, oh, you have, like, oh, it's just, it's 300 dollars, yeah, I need it, why, because my friend's wearing it, and this kid, mom, or father, don't have the money, they will go to, Maybe a loan from someone and they have to buy it for you. Miskin, they don't have it. But they don't want to make you mad. Oh, yeah, just, I need this hoodie. Okay, some, you know, some kids, they always like to read. Okay, this $200, yes, I need it. Okay, you need to go work for it. No, I need it. You have to buy it for me. They're not a slave for you. you just, you're, they are your parent. Some kids, when they talk to their parents, they don't talk like a, Kids and parents, they give an order. I need this one now. It has to be by. I need these shoes. I need the jacket. I... Okay, I need this. Oh, there's a new PlayStation. Yes, I want to go there. No, just when you're talking to your father, talk to them 
with respect and don't pressure them. If they don't have it, they don't have it. Okay? I will tell you one more thing. And if I see you talking or talking to your... Uh, if I see you talking, I will make you stand up. I don't want to do that, but don't make me do it, okay? I'm good at that. Maybe you don't know. I just, when I give, when I talk to the youth or students, if I see someone talking, I say, "Hey, Muhammad, please stand up." And that would be ayb, I don't want to embarrass anybody. Just stand him up because he was talking. Okay. Okay. Uh, they were uh, also a guy. He didn't like uh, the attitude of his father. Maybe some uh, his father, yes. Why? Because I always say to the father, okay, don't do this, do this. When you go there, turn off the light. Uh, don't put your shoes here and close the door after you. When you use the bathroom, close the door, don't leave it. Uh, don't put the paper here. When your parents is telling, are telling you this, they're not telling you just to, for dictating, they're telling you this to make you the best. Okay? They were a guy, uh, he didn't like his father because of that. Oh, my dad is doing me this, this, this. Finally, he, he, he will say, oh, if I got a job, I will move from my parents. Not only from the city, I will move to other city. Next day he saw a uh, flyer. He said, okay, we're looking for uh, a new employer and we hiring for this and this. And he saw the flyer and he got excited, so happy. He brought the flyer to his parents. Oh, my father, I got this one. I'm gonna go to interview. When? Day after tomorrow. Okay, you can do that. And then, the day of interview morning, the father went to the masjid, uh, asked the Muslim to make du'a for his son. May Allah make it easy for him. The father making du'a for his son, just he wants him to be independent. And the son looking for this job to leave his father. See the difference? The father is doing this because he want to make his son happy. And the son looking for this job just to leave his father. Okay, what happened uh, before around seven a.m. when he came back to his uh, salah, he gave him ten riyal. He said, "Okay, just uh, when you go there, if you need water or tea, buy it, and I will advise you one thing: <laughs> always show confidence when they talk into the when they interview you. They will look at your face, how you talk, and how confidence always." When they asked me, for, show me your confidence. He said, okay. The guy went to the interview place. It's big. He opened the first door. And he saw the door is open. Um, he, said, he closed the door. Okay. He was coming to the hallway. And he said, all lights are on. And he said, okay, why they are on? He, he turned off the lights. Okay. Then he came to somewhere, uh, auditorium, big auditorium. All he's in, uh, lights are on. He looked at someone, he said, that's a waste of money. He turned off the lights and some of the uh, heat, air conditions. Then he came to big hall like this and he said, a lot of people sitting, and no one is talking to other one. Everybody's studying, studying what they can ask me. Everybody's wants his job, and they will call to that room, and no one is coming here. Like as soon as you finish the interview, leaving from the other room. So even you cannot ask question. Finally, they call his name. He said Fulan, Fulan. He said yes. They ask him, okay. When do you want to start the job? He said, okay. He didn't ask him any question. When do you want to start the job? 
He said, what do you mean? Uh, did I get hired? Did you hire me? He said, yes, when do you want to start a job? And which city? Okay, but you didn't ask me anything. He said, uh, you know, when you were coming from the first door to, the, to, to here, we put camera everywhere. We were looking who will do the right thing for this big building. If you see lights on, will you be careless or are you are going to turn off? If you see something wrong with the door, are you going to fix it or are you going to leave it there? And you're the only person right now qualified for this job. He said, I'm the manager and owner of this company. Interview, I know, they will know all the questions and they will answer, but who will do things like this? Maybe someone like you. Therefore, I hired you and I want you to be responsible of this place. When do you want to start and where? He said, I want to start tomorrow and here in this city. And he came to his father. He said, my father, Zakalaka for taking me the good thing. You know, I used to hate when you told me, turn off, close the door, that, that. But you know what? Today I got hired because of that. I closed the door, I turned off the lights, I did the right thing. So they hired me, Zakalaka for teaching me the good thing. And I am so proud of you, Father. Okay. That's the end of the story. What is the benefit of this story? What can we benefit from this story? If you don't answer, I'm going to ask you that. Okay, mashallah, this guy is very active. Go ahead. Respect your parents and listen to them, okay? Listen if they ask you to do something, okay? Yes. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, one more. One more thing. Some some kids maybe they think if the parent tell them to do this, will say, I know it's wrong, but I will do it because you're the parent. No, don't say that. Also, that's disrespect. Even if you do, that will be disrespect. Don't think, don't ever think that your parent will tell you something wrong. Don't ever think like that. Always remember, your parent wants you to be the best. Wants you to be better than them. There is no one in this world, for even I, my brother, I, want to be, I don't want him to be better than me. Even my brother, okay? But my kids, I want him to be better than me. That's my kids, I'm so proud of him. So always remember that a parent always will teach you good thing. Okay? He has a question, okay? MashaAllah, that's a good point. What's your name? Yeah? Nasruddin. Nasruddin said, don't get mad if your parents ask you to do something. Good. Good, MashaAllah. Yeah, that's great, MashaAllah. Okay. Um, we still have 15 more minutes. Did you get that? Okay. So Abdullah, should we continue? Yeah. Okay. One more, and that's it. <laughs> okay. Okay, this time we will, yeah. Okay. This time we will shift to another way, okay, with a good attitude. It's okay, just at the, at the, after the end of this story, yes, inshallah, we're going to make open no open questions. Okay. Okay, someone uh, used to work from small village, and he got a new job in big city. They call him interview 
to come to that city. Okay, he gave him the time and the place. Okay, he dressed up. Uh, he took the airplane. And next to him were sitting father, guy, and his son. Okay. In the airplane, they will give you uh, juice and a food and something like that. And some, okay, they, they brought tea for uh, the guy. He said, no, I don't need anything. He's scared. He's thinking what they're going to ask me. And the guy next to him, they brought for him uh, tea for him and orange juice for his son. And his son starts crying, jumping, and he took the juice. What happened? He took and he flipped up, threw the juice. The guy uh, that go into the interview, and he doesn't have any other, he just wearing the kameez and the imama for the interview. And this, the young guy was jumping, he took the juice and he threw it. And the guy, he said, his imam is messed up, his clothes messed up. And the father was yelling to his son, he said, no, 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 please don't do it. He's a young guy and it's okay. Please don't do it. I, I'm okay. Are you sure? Yes, I'm okay. Please don't do it. And he said, it's okay. I know, we all, we used to be a kid, and I know, I did more than this, please don't do anything to him. <coughs> and uh, they, the, the airplane landed, and he went to, uh, he has two hours, he ran to the closest masjid, he washed his imam and his clothes, and he tried, he took shower, then he came to the interview after two hours. And guess what, the one who was doing the interview, was the father of that son, the one who was sitting next to him, the one doing the interview. He saw him, you were sitting next to me. Yes. Okay. You know what? I'm not gonna ask you any question. You are, Masha, you have good akhlaq, and you control your, uh, you, you control your temperature, yeah, you didn't get, I know everybody will get mad, but you control your madness. You didn't show me that you sat, and even not only that, you talked to me to not punish my son. My son. Therefore, that means you had good akhlaq, therefore you already had no more questions. At the end of this story, just, that's the last story. The akhlaq, you know what is akhlaq, what is akhlaq? What is it? What is a clock? Okay. What is it? What manner? You know, to have a good manner. You know, uh, one of the best thing in the life to have a good manner. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi said two things will make you enter paradise. One of them is taqwa Allah, husn al to have a good manner. As a Muslim, we have to show a good manner to our neighbor, to our classmate, to our roommate, if you have a roommate, to your co-worker. So always you have to have good manner, always. When you're talking, talk limit. And talk according to the deen, to our deen. Don't criticize. Don't say bad words. Some of the kids right now, the first thing that comes from the mouth is either F word or B word. That Muslim don't do that. The Prophet said, Fibabul Muslim Yafusuk. To say B word or F word to Muslims is Fisq. I mean, it's just one level down from Kuf, from non believer. From non believer. Therefore, you have to. What is husn al Do you know the definition of husn al Is to smile always. That's husn al the, the scholars of Muslims, when they're explaining husn al they said it's three things. Number one, always smile. Some people, when you see it to their face, you say, oh, you did I kill that parent? Why? Why? Smile. Always smile. You know, when non-believers or non-Muslims, when they see you, they always, hi, they smile. 
और वो ऋषि समो समाए ये प्रेरणा कैसे सलाम आ देखो और दस ना कि वो ऋषि योर ब्रदर और योर सिस्टर स्माइल एंड से सलाम आ देखो स्माइल ऑलवेज हैव दिस स्माइल फ्रॉम सल्लल्लाहु अलैहि वसल्लम इनकोरिंग अस टू हैव टू स्माइल टू अदर टू द अदर्स एंड ही सेड tabassumuka fi wajhi akhika sadaqa smiling to your brother or sister is sadaqa like donating money if you smile to your brother or sister you get an idea to do that so that's number one number two is give give what you have don't be stingy don't be bakhil if you have something share you know in this school they teach and share and it's caring right But in Islam, taught us more than 1,400 years ago. Donate. If you have give, give a gift to your mom. Have you? Uh, let me ask you one question. That is there any one of you, when, when even one day, give to his mom or dad a gift? Raise your hand if we have that person. One person we have. Okay, two, three. Mashallah. Did you buy a gift for your mom or dad? You went to the market, she didn't know. You buy for, you know, sometimes your dad uh, loves something, okay? You can buy something and say, my dad, this is a gift for you. You know, if you do that, Wallahi, he will make dua from the bottom of his heart, not just any dua. Say, oh, mashallah. That thing, oh, mashallah, comes from the heart, Allah will accept it because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us that if your parent made dua for you, Allah will accept it 100%. Allah will accept your mother or your father's dua. If you, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, tahadu, tahadu, give a gift and you will love one another. So if you already done it, that's good. If you haven't, please try even one time. Not that you just buy even gum. I want to, if you don't have money, just buy one thing for them. Or do something. Or you, when your mom or dad sleeping, come, woke up early and clean the house. Mom, I did this one for you. When she woke up and she did, oh, mashallah, may Allah bless you. Okay. Maybe your dad needs something. Okay, you know he needs it. Go, jump and get for him, go. That's also husn al And the third thing is kaft al To not bother others. Okay. Do not bother or give heart time to anyone. Or that's the meaning of uh, good uh, manner. What, are, what is the good manner? Three things. I just want you, I will repeat again, then I will ask you. Three things is good manner. If we say good manner is one, two, three. Smiling, giving uh, others or helping others, and stop bothering or giving hard time to others. Okay, what is manner? What is it? Good manner, okay? Okay, just we give, I need a definition. I mentioned three things. Number one is it? A smile, good. Uh, not only your mom and dad, but give something or help. If you cannot give, help. Okay, what is the third thing? Do not bother others. MashaAllah. So that is the khul, khul al hasan. If you have these three things, you know what is the reward for that? You not only go into Jannah, you will be next to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Yeah, you will be next to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Not only, if you, a lot of people will go to Jannah, but a lot of them will not be neighbor of the Prophet or will not be close to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But if you do these three things, you will have that, inshallah ta'ala. Okay? Zakumullah khair, barakallah fikum. If you have any question, we'll answer, we'll take it. Otherwise, I will give you a mic to Shaykh Allah.
بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أجمعين. جزاه الله خير فضيلة الدكتور الشيخ أحمد اليمني. As Somali people, the mostly when we announcement the muhabara and we tell the people the time. We delay it every time. I don't know, is there a misunderstanding of the time or that is our behavior? Uh, really, we made the announcement is five o'clock and we need to pray here, all of us. But some brothers and sisters, they come in now after a few minutes. And when we pray the Maghrib, Zawlaw Khair, Dr. Shah Mukhtar is in office now. He did the Mahadara, the Somali language, with a few people. So I wanted to encourage us youth. The youth is not like the, the old fashioned Somali people. You grow up here, you know the system, you know what minute the time. So if we announcement from some register, we have to come here and start the Mahadara at 5 o'clock. We have to be here at 4.40 or 4.50 at least. The chairs came from all the way from Ohio, Columbus. This is a lecture. And to get the benefit. But where are our youth? The Mignite people, is this people only? No. So we are very, very, really sorry. But inshallah ta'ala we continue to tell the people the haq and the deen to make them hadara. That's the reason we build in this masjid, inshallah ta'ala. Before we start inshallah ta'ala the salat al isha I wanted to call inshallah ta'ala and to welcome the microphone. When one of our mashallah ta'ala uh, youth and one of the mashallah of ta'ala is the great student and I wanted to share with us how can you be the successful student I know all of you that you are students inshallah ta'ala I call brother Suleiman inshallah ta'ala to give you 10 minutes inshallah ta'ala uh, short speech inshallah ta'ala Brother Salaman, he graduated uh, uh, high, uh, high school, high school. The Shah Ahmed, mashallah ta'ala, he was very well. Now he's uh, one of the students is a university at Minnesota. So inshallah ta'ala, we need to talk to uh, uh, the students, inshallah ta'ala, how can you be the successful student? Ask yourself, how is your grade now? You have A or you have C or you have B. How is your behavior when you are in school? I know all of you, some of our students here, we know their behavior. But we need to know how you can be the good students. How can you get A plus? Welcome, brother, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, my name is Sulaiman Muhammad, and inshallah, I'd like to talk to you guys about today how to be a successful student. Um, I graduated Harding High School here in St. Paul in 2016 uh, with, alhamdulillah, uh, successful grades and successful GPA. I am now attending the University of Minnesota Twin Cities. So a little bit more about myself, I'm studying architecture, that's the, the design of buildings and also cities as well. Um, so inshallah, one quick tip and one piece of advice about being a successful student, um, this is probably the most important one, is the remembrance of Allah and dua and salah. 
Um, when you are in school, you will often face um, hard, I guess, trials and tests and tests. And it's important to keep remembering of Allah and dua. When you make uh, salah, when you make dua, you know, ask Allah, you know, please make this journey of school uh, easy for me, inshallah. Um, actually, first, I want to know, raise your hand if you're in middle school. So raise your hand, and who, who are the middle schools here? Who's middle school? Hmm? Who's in high school? MashaAllah. Do we have any more college students here? Brother Hassan, and also the sisters, and also the college, or? I think it's Mary. It's Hassan. What, what schools do you guys go to? I want to know. So, who raised their hand from middle school? Who's a middle school student? What school do you go to? Battle Creek. Who raised their hand for high school? What, what school do you go to? Harding. Okay, mashallah. The second thing, other than dua and salah, to keep remember is your priorities. Let me give you a scenario. So, you have a, an essay due, or a homework assignment due in the morning, but then your friend, let's just call him Ahmed, he said, hey, let's go to uh, Battle Creek, let's play some basketball. So let me ask you guys this, what's more important at this moment? Completing your homework assignment or having fun with your friends? So keep in your mind about remembering what's important, you know. You're in school, you're a student. Being a student is a big part of your life. And so keep remembering to, to keep up with your homework assignments and to keep up with, you know, what's important. It's very important. You know, fun comes, fun goes, but then it's always remember, you must remember to keep like important, uh, your priorities in life, and that's being a student. There's time for fun, and there's time for what? Work. So the second point is keeping your priorities. Uh, the third point is keeping a system of organization. Okay, raise your hand if you use your planner. I know in those school, you, they may give you a planner. So do you guys have like a planner to write down your homework? Who has a planner? Raise your hand. School gives it to you, right? Do you use your planner? Be honest. Who doesn't use their planner? Because there are systems that work for some people and there are systems that doesn't work. So finding a way or a system to keep organized is important. Who does, who raised their hand for not using their planner? I know somebody did. Why don't you use your planner? You forget it in your backpack. Do you, the times that you do use it, do you find it helpful? No. What do you use to keep up with your homework? Yes. Your iPad. What do you do? Do you write down like in the notes app? Oh, okay. That's the second way of keeping organized. So there are different systems for different people. Okay, well, what might work for you may not work for somebody else. So having a system of organization is very important in keeping up with your grades and being a successful student. Uh, the third point is, is surrounding yourself with a positive system of people. Okay, I know everybody knows someone, you know, that you can say, oh, mashallah. You know, so and so, they're always on top of their homework, they're always on top of their assignments, they're always um, good in duksi. Having, you know, a positive system beyond your family is also important. Your mother, your father, your uncles, your yeo, your wo, it doesn't matter. Your family is here for you and they will support you in school. But then your friends, 
you know, friends come and go. So finding uh, in school a good, I guess, crew or a good um, group of friends to associate you with is, is important. I want to give a quick story. So in Harding High School, I'm not going to say any names. So in Harding, while I was in, attending Harding, I, can, I know, uh, you know, a group of people that I knew that I can count with my hands that were not always on top of their homework or their assignments. And so, you know, now, you know, they, they made their choices in life. They're, they're, they're not, I guess, you know, at the best place they can be in life. But Alhamdulillah, I, I look to the people who in my life that were positive, positive role models. And I saw what they were telling me and uh, the lessons I learned from them. And I looked to the people that I was seeing in the hallways and seeing in the classroom. And I realized that, you know, having this positive system that I can call upon for any questions I have in my life is very important. And then I was able to, alhamdulillah, I guess, further distance myself from, uh, I guess we say, a community of negative individuals at Harding High School. I know you guys are Harding, you know, when you're walking down the halls, you, you notice kids who are loud and rowdy. So you, you go to Harding, right? You know what I'm talking about, right? You know those group of kids, right? They're loud. They sometimes they don't go to class. They spend their time, you know, roaming the halls. So, you know, having a good system of positive people in your life, good role models is important in your family and beyond. Uh, and I think if if you guys keep those 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 key tasks and pieces of pieces in your mind, then Alhamdulillah, inshallah, you will be very successful students. Um, the last piece of advice is having a set of goals. When you go into anything, have some idea of what you want to get out of it. So if you go into school thinking, okay, every day I'm going to come, I'm going to do my homework, and I'm going to go home, that's it. Ask yourself this, are you going to be successful? Your answer is no. You need to set yourself with a set of goals. Okay, on this day, I'm going to study this, and therefore, because of that, I'm going to get an A in this class. And because of this A, this A will set to a bigger idea, a bigger goal. Who here wants to go to college? Raise your hand if you want to go to college someday. MashaAllah. College is important. So in order to get into college, do you guys think you're just going to walk into college one day and you're going to be a college student? The answer is no. You have to have, from day one of high school, goals that you can set for yourself. I will have, you know, a consistent 3.0 GPA, for example. It's not a perfect A, but you know, alhamdulillah, it's a good GPA. So having a set of goals to keep your sex to keep yourself successful is very important and I think you know I don't want to overwhelm you guys so I'll leave it at this for now inshallah jazakallah uh, khairan assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Zama khair Allah Assalamu Barakallahu Fiqh I know his family is MashaAllah Ta'ala Good mom And a good MashaAllah Ta'ala Brothers and sisters MashaAllah Jazakumullah khair Barakallahu Fiqh We know the dua Like that family InshaAllah When we finish up the salat The sister is They will be in their position InshaAllah Ta'ala We made the big InshaAllah Ta'ala Plastic and we need to keep, inshallah, uh, the situation 